All right, welcome back everyone to the Athlete's Mind podcast. Super pumped for this one, continuing with the theme of the MMA episodes. You lot have been loving these. Appreciate all the support. Make sure you follow us on the social so you don't miss out. But today we are welcoming Moses the Killmonger Dang. Thank you for joining us today, the newly crowned flyweight champion. And, you know, you're an exciting fighter, man. Um, how's training been going? Coming off the win, how have you been? Uh, it's a pleasure being here, bro. But, um... Yeah, I've only been training like a few days since getting back from the fight. Like, um, your body's not the same after coming back from a fight and also weight cutting, you know, like I cut quite a bit for flyweight. I usually walk around like almost 70 and mm. flyweight's 57. Yeah. Well. So you gotta, le- you gotta let your body rest for a little bit. Yeah, but, for um, sure. Yeah, everything's been good, bro. Like I've been getting <laughs> a lot of messages from people and so it's just, it's just been pretty chill, you know, like. You do get burnt out from all the social interaction, from all the sure. success and all that, but like, yeah, everything's been sweet, bro. Yeah, and that, I guess that comes with it, mm. or like getting all those messages, and obviously you are a very exciting upcoming fighter, so, you know, that's just something that, you know, you've just got to, it's just part of the sport. Got to get used to it, yeah. 100%, man. Um, and I sort of want to ask you, obviously, Killmonger, your mm. name, I uh, love that. How did you actually come up with that? Um, it was, um, it's cause I loved the character from the Black Panther movie. Yeah. And originally I was going to go with it like a different name. I don't know what it was exactly, but I remember going on Tapology. So Tapology has like all the fighters in the world and yep. like their records and whatnot. And so I put in Killmonger and there was nobody registered under Killmonger. So yep. I was like, let me be the first Killmonger on Tapology, you know? But now there's like two others in yeah, the US, yeah. but I got, I got, yeah, I got first dibs. I was the first one. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. chilling. Yeah. Nah, that is a sick name, and I pray that you got it from Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Um, but where did your MMA journey actually begin? Did you get into it at a young age? Did you get into it later? What sort of sparked your passion for the sport? Um, I got into it fairly late because, like, um, what started all this was watching the Karate Kid when I was younger. Oh yeah, and so that sparked my interest in like um, mixed martial arts, and you know, African parents they wouldn't let you do that stuff. Yeah, at yeah, a young yeah. Age, you know, so. Um, <laughs> I didn't start training until I think it was mid or early 2020. Yeah. And so with the interest sparked by the Karate Kid movie, I always had like somewhat of an interest in martial mm. arts, but I never really had any um any feelings towards having a career in yeah. any martial arts. You just wanted to try. Yeah, I just wanted to try. I thought it was cool, you know? And so I remember um not too long after graduating high school, I was just like studying, uh, I'm studying architecture still. Oh, cool. But I was just studying and I saw there was, um, there was a judo class at, on Curtin, on Curtin, uh, on the campus. Yeah. And so that re like reignited my spark for martial arts. So I started looking into it a little bit more. And then not long after I started training and then I was catching on to it. Re- I was catching on to it real quick. And so I was like, I could turn this into something, you know, mm-hmm. and the rest is history. Yeah. Jeez. And you mentioned like, you got into it from watching the Karate Kid. Mm. Like, I find that actually quite interesting because you got into it later. Like, mm. getting it off of a movie, did you, like, you mentioned that, you know, you just wanted to try it out. Mm. Looking where you are now, does that sometimes shock you that, you know, it initially pretty much did start from you mm. watching a movie, going and trying it out, and then now putting it into, like, actually becoming a career for you? Does that, like, shock you even thinking about that? Yeah, it kind of does. Cause, like, um, with the initial spark and interest from the movie, I didn't really dive into this world of martial arts until I was like 18, 19. Yeah, okay. So there was a huge gap between the, the, the first bit of it to like where I actually started, you know? Yeah. And that was mainly because of my parents. Yeah, yeah. But like I had almost like just completely forgot about it throughout my whole high school experience. And it was just because of uni, I really like mm. re got back into it. And so, yeah, it just feels weird because like it started way back then. Nothing happened for like 10 years. And then uni starts, I get into it. And like three and a half years later, I'm an amateur champion, yeah, you know, it's, it's everything's crazy. gone real quick. Yeah. yeah. And I find it like interesting, like, you know, you've progressed so quickly. Like mm. you've started, 18 is like pretty late to start. Yeah, like it getting is, into yeah, in combat sport, sports. Yeah. yeah. So you've progressed really quick. Um, And you are training at Wolves Den, is that correct? Yeah. Mm. I want to ask like, because that obviously would have influenced you massively in your MMA journey. Um, How have they been as a support network and obviously your main gym, how have the coach has been able to develop you as a fighter? Uh, it's been great like um because originally i was training at kick ass mma in morley and yeah, then I, when i made the move to wolves den i felt like it matched me as a fighter a lot better because there was more fighters my size at wolves den whereas kick ass has like the bigger guys and all that and so like 
when you're training martial arts, you need like really good quality um, training partners. Mm. And if they're your weight class as well, that makes it even better, you know? Like the guys at Kickass were amazing. Yeah. But these guys at Wolves Den, they, they fit more of my weight class. So I could get better quality and more realistic training in because I'm going to be fighting guys my size at the gym mm. and I'll be fighting guys my size in the cage. Mm. But at my older gym, most guys were bigger, you know? So it feels like it suits me better. Yeah. And then also like, Wolves Den is such a great community. It feels like it's almost like a second home, you know? Yeah. Like, you just go in, you got no worries. Every, everybody's chill. Everybody's like, everyone's just like another sibling to me, you know? So it's sweet yeah. there. Yeah, because, yeah. um, I mean, the MMA gyms that you train at, like, it's really important to have a good community. Like, even mm. some of the other guys that mm. um, train MMA that I've interviewed on here, um, I've had some guys from Luistra Combat. Um, I've heard great things about Wolves Den. Um, now talking about your recent fight, obviously you got the win, you brought mm. the belt, which I love. Um, you got the win against David Mirabelli and you mentioned that you wanted that to be the Mona Lisa of your amateur career. Mm. Now coming off of the win, um, you know, how does it feel? Like you've got the belt, you did what you set out to do. You won by submission. Um, you know, congratulations, mm, but, appreciate uh, it, bro. you know, how does it feel like at the moment coming off of that win? feels amazing. Cause, um, in the lead up to this fight, there was a lot of back and forth. We were talking trash on social yeah. media. Saw a couple and so, of yeah, that, yeah. Um, I really wanted to, like, prove a point that I was levels above him. Mm. And then on top of that, I, like, I planned that this was going to be my final amateur fight. So I wanted it to be perfect. I mm. needed to I needed to get a finish. And um, I needed to teach David a lesson. And yeah. everything worked out fine, you know. So I'm mm. chilling. So, obviously, the camp leading up to this fight, um, a lot of fighters talk about how intense camp can be not only physically but mentally mm. on the body um was there anything different you were trying to focus on in this camp leading up to this fight and how did you sort of find the training intensity uh funny enough it was um i focused mainly on my boxing going to this fight oh cool and then and that you, won, and you won by submission yeah i won by like, submission yeah. but um yeah the boxing went out the window as soon as i got injured you know like um i had a grade two tear on my ucl Jeez, in the thumb yeah. and so um i like initially when i injured it I was like, I'm definitely not pulling out. I'm still gonna win, yep. but now I can. I can't really box to the same capacity I was before this, you know. And so that had me a, a little. I wouldn't say stressed, but more of like annoyed, you know. It was just mm. more of a nuisance. But um, going to this fight, yeah, just working on boxing a lot, and then I don't know life just pulled the owner reverse, and we got the submission. For sure, man. Mm. And now. Obviously, your fighting style is super entertaining. Like, I've watched some of your highlights. Um, but also, with your fighting, you're, you have a great personality. You know? I appreciate it, bro. Thank with, you. With MMA, it's big being an entertainer. And I see that you really take that on board. How important would you say it is for yourself and MMA fighters to be entertaining and, you know, show the crowd that, you know, showboat a little bit, mm. do all of that stuff? Do you think that's a really crucial part of the sport? It most definitely is. Like, um... The marketing side is what I, I like. I've noticed a lot of fighters neglect. You know, mm. there's a lot. Of, um, there's quite a lot of pros who are way more experienced and more established in the MMA community than I am. But I've been able to like market myself to an extent where I'm a bigger name than they are. Yeah, because sure. I've like, I haven't neglected that side of the sport. You know, like, because we are entertainers and we're also businessmen at the end of the day. And if you're a good fighter, but you bring in no eyes, no attention the bigger promotions are not going to care about you, you know? For sure. So there's the business side that people, like, tend to forget about. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, like, keeping that in mind because, personally, I'm not going to be in the sport for too long. Like, I'm 22 years of age now. Mm. When I'm 32, I'm out. Because yeah. I don't see a point... I, I, don't, I just don't see the point in me competing past my prime, yeah. you know? It's just unnecessary damage. I'm going to have kids to look after. They need a dad with a brain, you know? Your health as well. Exactly. Man. And once your health is gone, it's gone. Yeah. And so, like, me, I want to make the most of the sport. I want to make I want to make the most I can out of the sport. I want to get the cheddar, get all my yeah. accomplishments done, and bounce, you know? Yeah. And so, the way to, like, fast track that in a way is market yourself really well a lot of doors will open for you. Like I've already got uh, management already looking at me and I'm yeah, just an yeah. amateur, you know? Yeah, yeah. Most pros don't get that until late in their career. For sure. And I've already got like the attention of other UFC fighters and all this. Yeah. And that's all because I've been able to market myself. Yeah. And so for me, I've only got 10 years left in the sport. I'm about to go pro. I want to market myself, have as many um, opportunities as, as I can and just 
try to accomplish everything I want to accomplish in the sport in the next decade, you know? And so marketing is like step one to all of that. And then fighting and winning is the next step, you know? For sure. And you know, like, yeah, marketing, like you said, it goes such a long way. It does, yeah. um, Even like, you know, you've mentioned that you get like a lot of these DMs and all that. Like Mm. you've got all this hype surrounded by you. And, you know, like you said, you're an amateur. So you've Mm. got all this hype. How do you sort of deal with that hype? Can that sometimes get to your head? Like when you're training sometimes, like, Mm. you know, like with people messaging you, like, have you dealt with haters? Like any stuff like that? I definitely do get a lot of hate because, you know, some people are envious of the the things I'm getting at such an early age and yeah. such an early, uh, what's called, part of my career, you know? Like, um, a lot of people would like to call me cocky, but there's a fine line between cockiness and uh, what's called confidence, you know? Mm. I'm only confident because I know the potential I have and where I could take this. And, like, if I was cocky, then I'd be like, saying this and that and i'd be losing that's cockiness yeah. but if i'm saying something and then doing that You're backing it up that's confidence you know i'm backing it up i said i was going to finish dave in the third round i did just that mm. so, uh, people before the fight were saying oh it's cocky he's this and this but i back it up you know like i spoke it into existence like a good example would be in the ufc um Ilya. everyone was calling him cocky i was yeah. telling everybody before the fight the yeah. guy's gonna get yeah, it done yeah, yeah, yeah. uh Ilya's too cocky he's gonna yeah. get humbled bro he was confident in himself yeah. And he delivered. Anyone. Exactly. Yeah. So people just like to hate people who are confident in themselves and can speak it out, you know? Like other people are too like insecure or like worried about what people are going to think if they say, oh, I'm going to do this or I'm that. Me, like I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of haters, but I'm still confident enough to speak what I believe, you know? Yeah. And so that's something that's never going to leave me. You can call me cocky, but... You can watch me keep uh, having all the success. I write that, yeah. man. You know, having confidence is such a big thing, like mm. in any sport, you know, like being able to back it up and, you know, talk the talk, walk mm. the walk, which you have done. Mm. It's a massive thing, man. Um, now, talking a little bit about UFC fighters mm. that you look up to or base your style off, is there anyone that stands out that you really try and you watch them and you're like, I want to be like that person. I want to try mm. and implement some of the things they implement into my fighting style. Um, there's a few, like... um. I try to take points from fighters who have a similar body type like me, you know? Like, yeah. um, say, because I have a pretty slim and, like, lanky build. If I try to fight, like, a guy who's short and stocky, it's just not going to work, you know? Mm. So I look at fighters like um, Sean O'Malley, Israel, yeah. Yeah. Um, Max Holloway, and uh, even, like, John Jones and all that. Yeah. Guys who have a similar body, body type to me, you know? Mm. And if I could take things from them and put it into my own style, it makes my style more elevated. It makes me a more dangerous fighter, you know? And so I look up to them and, like, study them a lot, you know? But, like, there are some exceptions where there's a s- difference in body type. Like, Piotr Jan, he's not as lanky and tall, but, like, he has a very nice style, you know? Like, yeah. that sit-back and counter style. And I like to counter a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I just look into, look into those fighters who have similarities, similarities to me physically. And so... Yeah, nice, that's where I take man. my inspiration from. And and outside of, you know, UFC fighters mm-hmm. talking on a bit more of a grounded level with people you look up to for advice and people who support you, who would you say in your life is that biggest supporter? I know there's a long list. You've got coaches, you've got family, mm-hmm. you've got friends. If you can narrow it down to a couple of people, who is, you know, those people in your life that really support you in your journey? Um, I'd say my number one would be my girlfriend's dad. Like, he really Ooh, keeps man. me grounded, you know? Um, yeah, just, just like career wise and also like life in general like he always seems to know what to say he's very he's a very wise man and so like i go to him for a lot of advice even though he's never competed in martial yeah, arts yeah he just seems to have a like a good head screwed on you know yeah, cool, cool, and yeah. so yeah i just go to him a lot and then also like other fighters like abdallah and kevin Cophamel, you know they help me a lot with like just stuff that i'm thinking about regarding my career or like choices i want to make Mm. And so watching them, because they're, they're, they're both already pros, yeah. I could take, like, points from their careers and their experiences. And so it just, like, it helps me kind of, like, navigate my career. So, yeah, I'd sure. say those three people. Nice, man. And for, for other people out there who want to get into MMA or, you know, it, whether that's competing or just started for fitness, they're looking for a gym, mm. what advice can you give to them? Start wrestling, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, um, yeah, crucial part. Wrestling is probably the best base for martial yeah. arts. Um, but on a more serious note, you just gotta, first you gotta think to yourself and 
figure out what you want from the sport do you want to take it all the way or do you want to just do this for fitness or do you want to do it as a hobby you know mm. once you answer that question you move on to the next question is and that's because and that next question is um what kind of gym fits your vibe like what kind of mm. gym culture would be best suited for you and like um some gyms are more like rough and tough some gyms are more like flowy and go with the go with the flow type of gyms and then some gyms are really traditional you know mm. so you got to find what gym suits your personality most and then you go from there you know yeah and so that that would probably be my bit of advice for anybody starting for sure man like the at the end of the day the gym you're at plays such a crucial it does role. it does it will um, make or break a fighter's career 100 yeah. man um now we do have a couple mental questions for you mm. at the end of the day this is the athlete's mind mm. so we love asking these um the first one i have for you is talking a little bit about mental burnout is there mm. ever been a time in your life where you've experienced mental burnout from training or just you know trying to balance training with life like you mm. mentioned you're at uni um is there times where you know your schedule gets a little bit overwhelmed yeah most definitely like um because i'm studying architecture at uni you know mm. and so assignments start getting the better of me sometimes you yeah know? for sure and then on top of that i've been in situations where i've been in a training camp and i've got like a load of assignments yes. waiting for me and then on top of that i've got like relationships to look yeah. after you know it's and tough. it just it burns you out and like Usually when I get to that point, like a coping mechanism for me is like I just shut down, I close everybody out and I got to figure things out before I can even socialize again, you know? Mm. And so the best thing to do in that situation is actually the opposite of that, you know? You need like a good support system and like it may be, may not be healthy for me to like do that, but it's a necessary thing for me to do at the start of like a really rough season, you know? Like when things are all going wrong, I need to isolate myself first, mm. get myself grounded, and then socialize and get like a good support system going. But like people really need a good support system with people like that ki- that care about them and truly want the best for them, you know. And that's something people all like in the sport <laughs> need to establish. If you sure. don't have that, you're gonna crumble as a fighter, you know. Yeah. Especially in MMA, like I feel like mental health is a bit overlooked in MMA, mm. like. The training is so intense. Like you're training mm. pretty much every day, and especially in your situation, mm. like where you've got, you know, uni and all these other things in your life, it can get very overwhelming. Yeah. So having a good coping mechanism and a support network, like you mentioned, mm. very crucial. Um, but I guess what sort of motivates you to keep pushing? Like when times are hard, when you are a little bit overwhelmed, mm. um, what is that thing that you think to in your mind that just pushes you that extra limit and, you, you know, put in that extra round and that bit more extra work? um it's the life i envision having for myself and for my family you know because mm. when things are really like say tough or like messy i start to like think to myself this is where it counts most you know if i crumble now i will not have the life i want in the future mm. so if i can handle things now go through the hardship now everything will be smooth sailing later on you know and so that keeps me really grounded because say things go wrong with uni and I fail a couple units here and there and I give up and then that flows into MMA, I give yeah. up. I'm not going to have anything I wanted in, in, in the original place, you know? Yeah. And so I think to myself, do I want to be a UFC champion? Yeah, I'm going to take my ass to training even though I don't want to go to training. Yeah. Do I, do I want to get this degree? Yes. And if I like get lazy and get in the mindset of, I don't really need uni. Then what was the point of going to uni? I wasted thousands of dollars, you yeah. know. So I'm like, I've already, I've already invested too much into uni. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna drop out. So I got to get this degree. And then with MMA, I've already put my body through too much hardships. The like yeah. the weight cutting, the training camp, they're not gonna be for nothing, you know. I have to make it to the top. So that stuff keeps me grounded. The yeah. vision that I have for myself in the future is what keeps me grounded. I like that, man. It's mm. actually funny you mentioned like vision because mm. here on Athletes Mind, like our slogan is actually follow your vision. So mm. I really resonate with what you said mm. there. Um, you also mentioned that, you know, as well as your goals, but you want to envision a life for your family as well. Mm. Are you close with your family? And, you know, yeah. is that, do you have like a, a quite a big family? Is that like mm. you, you're quite close with them? Yeah, I got a big family. I'm the oldest of eight, you know, Wow. big, big family. Yeah, well. And so I have to like set a good example yeah. for the rest of my siblings and like lead by example for them. And then as well as like thinking in the future when I eventually have kids, like their dad's got to be a good role model, you know, because sure. 
I'm going to be setting the foundation for them. If I'm not a good role model, my kids are not going to be good people. Mm. So I have to be a good person before they even get here. And so like pretty much I have to like overthink to an extent everything I do whether it's career wise or like uh life in general. Mm. So everything's just got to be pretty like thought through thoroughly. Yeah, and w- what was your like family's reaction to you like get first of all getting into fighting but mm. also seeing where you are now like actually like you know making moves in it. Originally it was like Mm-mm, stop yeah. that go to uni. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, mum and dad were definitely against it. Um they just saw no point in it. It's just they just saw the barbaric side of MMA. It's mm. just two guys in a cage just yeah. brutally beating each other, you know. They don't see like the technical side of MMA, the beauty of it, you know? Yeah. It's basically chess, but the stakes are so much higher, you know? Mm. And so, like, um, as time's gone on, they've seen the success I've had and how the career trajectory is looking. So they've kind of, like, eased up. And my dad's still on the fence with it, mm. but mom's seen, like, all the things I've achieved from winning the gold at Gamma to now getting the belt. Yeah. She's on board now, you know? And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a wild ride with the family. Because, like, traditional families, they all, they all have the same mindset. It's just go to school, yeah. get a job, have a family, boom, you're successful. Now there's way more, yeah. there's more, ra- there's way more routes in life to success, you know? Mm. And that's something that they're going to have to learn eventually. But, yeah. 100%. My family's now coming along. Yeah, I write mm. that, man. I mean, well, now that, you know, you're showing all this success, mm. I'm sure they would be. Um. But I guess what's next for your MMA journey, man? Like, you know, it's really starting to get to that point where mm. opportunities are starting to open up for you, mm. your amateur career. You just got the belt. Mm. Um, is there a time frame you have that for a specific goal that you want to make in mm. the next year or two? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier on, 32 years of age, I'm out of this game. So I don't have too long, you know? Yeah. And so this was my final amateur fight. I'm going to be going pro next. And uh, originally I was hoping to come back in April, but... Mm. I'm going to be wise and let my thumb heal. Yeah. It's and so, smart, man. yeah, so I'm going to let my um, thumb heal. I'll return in June. I want to have three pro fights, but it's going to be hard because the flyweight division, it's full of divas, bro. Nobody wants to fight. Damn, <laughs> so right. I don't mind yeah. moving up a weight class here and there. Yeah. Okay. And so get three, three pro fights this year, end the year undefeated. And then um, next year, get another three. And hopefully that's enough to get a call up to the contender series and then earn my UFC contract. Sure, man. I mean, and you, you also mentioned that, like, you know, you want to finish with uni. I'm just curious, mm. like, uh, how many years do you have left of your, your uni? So this is my final year in uni, cool. but um, MMA is really taking off now. So yeah, I've decided to do part time. OK. And so this final year is going to be stretched over two years. Yeah. And then the thing is with architecture, to be legally an architect, you have to get your master's. Yeah. So I've got two years left with the master's and then I've got this final year left but it's going to be spread over Over, two years. So in total, i got four years left. But say I get to the UFC end of next year, I'm still going to be uni, bro. i got to get this degree. Yeah, 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 I'm still coming to uni. That's what I was wondering, man, mm. because I'm like, you know, you got your uni, but if an opportunity like that comes Mm. knocking at your door, like, you know, how are you going to sort of balance that? But I rate that, you know, Mm. it it really seems like you're following through of uni Mm. and you're taking that very seriously. Um, Mm. Getting into like architecture has that been like a passion of yours for quite For ages, bro. That that's that stuff started with Minecraft, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I write, I write that. <laughs> it started with Minecraft, and yeah. it's just like, um, bro. Like I was a nerd growing up, bro. Yeah. Like if eight year old me was to see who I am now, he'd be like, bro, what happened? Like, <laughs> what happened to the comics? What happened to the Minecraft? What happened to the video games? I'm like, the fire dog. With that guy now, bro. <laughs> with the, with the guy now, bro. And so yeah, like um. I got to get this degree in architecture. Like for me, because I'm retiring like 32 years of age. Mm. And I personally, I don't think, I feel like there's more to life than just fighting. You know, like sure. I love the sport of martial arts, yeah. but there's other things I want to get into, you know, like the architecture degree. I want to get into architecture after um, my UFC career. For sure. And then also aviation. I've always loved planes, yeah. bro. Nice, so man. I definitely want to go back to studying and like get my commercial pilot's license eventually. And oh. so... Yeah, that's pretty much the plan. I'll Ten years that. from now, I'll write that, out, man. back to studying, back to being a nerd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, seriously, I do mm-hmm. rate that. It really sounds like you've got like a really good roadmap um, set out for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got your UFC and you've got other passions as well to like mm-hmm. fall back on or try out, yeah. which I really rate that, man. So um, 
that's going to wrap up the episode. I really mm -hmm. appreciate you taking the time My today. Pleasure, brother. Um, I'm sure we'll see you in the UFC. Oh, very, it's definitely, bro. Very, it's inevitable. 100%. Very mm -hmm. exciting fighter. The Killmonger, Moses Deng, everyone. Go and follow his socials. You don't want to miss out on his career. He's exciting. Appreciate all the support, everyone. We'll catch you in the next episode of The Athlete's Mind. Much Thank love, you. bro. Come down with a fire. Being rich can't dump for a while. All these pussy be jacking my stars. All these pussy be my stars. Nine and I.